Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is the compost garden. As you can see, I'm getting a little bit of help from the ducks, mostly management style. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be doing some work in here. This weekend, it's supposed to frost. And I've got my carrots and rutabagas and sweet potatoes right there that I want to protect. And some tomatoes over here that can definitely go. So we're pulling up tomatoes. Taking measurements for a low tunnel that I'm going to build today over the patch of stuff I want to keep right here. So we measured the row that I want to cover in the garden and did a little bit of tomato cleanup, not a ton. Uh, got a bucket started of green tomatoes we're going to make into some green tomato relish. And then we spent forever in Lowe's. The problem with Lowe's or Home Depot or any of those stores is we can find a list of projects we want to get done as long as the day. So we end up because the trip is not, not too terribly far, but far enough it's a trip. We end up going ahead and planning for multiple projects at once. So we're just home from Lowe's and I'm going to show you a quick lineup of a couple of the things we have for the high, uh, low tunnel, excuse me, low tunnel that we're going to put over those veggies right there. All right, so I'm getting a little bit of chicken help as is typically the case. So let me pan down here. All right, so we've got three mil 10 foot by 25 foot clear plastic sheeting it's going to go over the tunnel we went ahead and bit the bullet and bought a stapler nail gun uh, we will use the heck out of this thing and are already thinking about upgrading to a little bit nicer of one but we'll be using that uh, i've got my little two pound mall hammer dewey can tell I'm a professional. So we got two sizes of wood staples. This is to hold the plastic to the wood. I'll show you that in a minute. Big box of wood screws. A couple of clamps. Some PVC couplers. And of course you always need extra bits, right? So that's my smaller consumables list okay okay part of the supply list includes the frame so we've got four 10 foot long sections of half inch pvc we grabbed some extra rebar but we grabbed a 10 foot long piece of rebar we're going to cut into about one foot sections with our angle grinder here and then three of these one by threes and we will cutting the PVC into five to six foot sections rebar into one foot sections and the three one by threes stay the same size next step so we've got our rebar cut into about one foot sections and they are in the ground at about two foot intervals down each side I'm gonna make sure those are in place with our little mini mall nothing too technical here just want to give it a little bit of support 
for when you're putting your PVC on it. So we've got our PVC cut to about a six foot length. My bed is four feet wide and I've got my rebar in. Now I'm just going to go through the PVC down over it. Hoop it down over this other side. That's going to be the support for your plastic that goes over this bed. I've got two in each direction to get on and then we'll put the plastic on next. So I have three mil clear plastic. It's a 10 foot by 25 foot. My row is approximately 13 feet, so I need a foot in each direction for the ends. I'm just going to measure this out where I'm going to cut it by rolling it out next to the row and then we'll attach the frame. One by three under the plastic I'm making the frame for the side that anchors to the PVC on the side you do not harvest from I'm going to use our new electric stapler hopefully not take a finger off and uh, then we'll put another one by three on top and screw them together here we go gotta turn it on first I've got my one and five eighths inch wood screw. I've got my top one by three. The plastic is sandwiched between the two and I'm about to screw them together like easy peasy. We took a quick coffee break. I had to grab a jacket because it's raining and I am freezing now. And we are about to cut three steaks, a foot, foot and a half. We're not getting super precise. We're gonna put these on the side that does not open to harvest and we will be screwing our double-sided frame to these. So here we go. Another first for me on the power tools today. So the stakes that we just cut, we're putting about a little over two inches from the back end of the PVC and we're going to wedge the plastic frame in back here and screw to these. This is not the side we'll be harvesting from. We'll roll plastic from that side to harvest, but this will give it a little more structure and strength. Okay, so I've got my frame. And the side that I only put one piece of wood on, I rolled the plastic up over it. So what we're going to do is take the rolled up piece. You'll see I've got my frame down here. And I'll probably have to actually move the stakes a little closer. And then you just 
take the plastic. Up and over. And the cool thing about doing it this way is you unroll it and the piece you have it rolled on keeps the tension on your plastic while it's up. We'll have to make a few adjustments to this tunnel. Uh, most of my measurements were, were estimates and guesstimates, but everything's looking really good so far. So we'll get those stakes screwed to that frame on the back, get a couple of other adjustments made, and we'll come back to show you the final product. So the very last thing we did after we rolled out the plastic was put some C-clamps on the end. You just wrap it up like a Christmas present. Our sweet potatoes over here we are probably going to take in the house and see if we can overwinter and try them again in the spring. But as you can see, we have a low tunnel and we've made some adjustments to the plans that I looked at to get the ideas and we're actually very very happy with this. So our first frost is supposed to be tomorrow night. We'll see how the carrots and rutabagas do. All right guys, I will put a list of materials with specifications in the uh, under the video if you're interested. And that's it for us. Thanks for watching.